is Bob Huber. A teacher and coach, linebacker, number 62, Reg Fielder. A consultant, linebacker, number 63, Brad Fielder. The head manager, director of development for the Lawrence J. Ellison Institute for Transformative Medicine of USC, Bill Lofi. A dentist, but he was the center, number 57, John Coleman. A retired football coach, a man who recovered the crucial fumble, offensive guard, number 76, Mike Scarpe. A security consultant, the kicker, who also played safety, number 18, Rod Ayala. An orthopedic surgeon, Number 64, Offensive Guard, Fred Kashikian. Currently retired, but a former tackle, number 72, Sid Smith. A VP of Real Estate, LA Fitness, linebacker, number 65, Greg George. Retired construction superintendent, number 55, linebacker, Jim Snow. A dentist in Aspen, Colorado, the 1969 captain and 1970 Rose Bowl captain, linebacker, number 51, Bob Jensen. A lawyer by trade, but a first round draft choice, fullback number 23, Mike Hall. And a mogul in real estate, linebacker, number 50, Adrian Young. And speaking on behalf of the 1967 National Champions, please welcome Captain Adrian Young. Good evening. Thank you for coming this evening. It's, uh, I'm humbled and honored <coughs> to be standing here representing this bunch of guys behind me. If if, if, if we could sense the amount of work and energy and dedication that this crew put together to become the national champs in 1967, it would be an inspiration for all who want to aspire to something great. Prior to the start of the season, we were ranked number seven. I say this because I know we're not ranked number one yet, but it's a long season, right guys? <laughs> so we were ranked number seven. We surprised everybody and beat somebody. And then we were number four the next week. Then we were number two. And for the rest of the year, the SC Trojans were where they should be. They were number one going into the second to last game. Hiccup, we went up to Oregon State. We played the, the team up there and we actually lost that game by three points. The score was 0 3. You can imagine what a scrum that was. Very difficult to imagine two really good teams playing such a, a, a low score. We were so fortunate though that the other best team in the country was across town. And that was the Bruins. The Bruins that week, I believe, went out and beat 
the Bruins at that point were number four, were number four we were number one. What happened was they were moved up to number one, we were moved back to number four, and we had the chance of a lifetime. I was talking a little bit ago to Sid Smith who said, I'll never forget the first practice that the Trojans had on that Monday of the, tro of the, of the game that we were going to play against UCLA. He said, we hit harder on that Monday with pads when we normally would be wearing shorts than anybody had hit all year long. We ended up beating the, beating the Bruins 21-20. Just one little bit of insight, which I think is really important and critical. As good as we all were, as hard as we all worked, we had a great coach in John McKay. And he, they noticed that the groom kicker was a, was a side kicker, a soccer kicker. And so we had a, he's in the hole. We had a guy named Bill Hayhoe, who was a, one of our defensive ends. He was 6'8". And the reason we won 21-20 is he blocked the extra point. So this 1967 team was one of the hardest working teams. I, I played professional football. I, I've been around a lot of hard working people. There was no one that worked harder than these guys. But we also had one of the best coaches and the best organizations. And we were so fortunate to have attended a place like this, which gave all of us a start in life. It, in fact, I would have to say it this way that we were all launched out into the world from a, from a place that was going to bring us back here when I'm 72 years old. Thank you very much.